I'm Jonathan Shapiro, and I'm the author of Liars, Lawyers, and Other Storytellers. Uh, today, I'm here with my good friend, Michael Botaluco, and the award-winning actor. And we're going to talk about a closing argument that he gave in an episode of The Practice. And we're going to then deconstruct it and see how the parts of it fit into our notion of the rhetorical triangle with the elements of ethos, pathos, and logos. We want to talk about a, um, what lawyers might be able to learn from an actor such as yourself about how to prepare to tell a story and how to present the story. In the book I talk about, and I'm not the first one to come up with it, Aristotle was, the idea that there are three elements, ethos, logos, and pathos, that go into a great story. So let's talk about this closing argument and see if we can identify those three elements in the closing. Well, th th this is, was a very... Short closing argument. Basically, my client, his name is Clyde uh, Barrows. He was uh, just at a hotel bar, and he sat down, and a woman approached him, and she was just a secretary. So he thought it was just a, you know, a, just a nice, easy evening, and they were sort of hitting it off, and uh, they wind up going back to the room, and then when they go back to the room, he finds out that she's a cop, and he's arrested for soliciting a prostitute. So based oh. on these facts, it looks like a very hard case for the defense. And so let's talk first uh, about the, the first element of the Aristotelian triangle, which is ethos, which is the notion that a speaker or a storyteller wants to appear credible and worth listening to. You'll see that in the, in, uh, the first part of, my, uh, of the closing. It's one thing when a policewoman goes undercover as a streetwalker. She's going to get solicited by people who are out looking for streetwalkers. But it's something else to seek a person out who's sitting at a hotel bar minding his own business. And that's what happened here. He's saying, look, I understand when, when cops go undercover and they, they get solicited as a prostitute and they act like a streetwalker, they're going to get solicited. But if someone's just innocently sitting at a bar, that, that's, a, that's a horse of a different color, so to speak. Right. And uh, I, I, I guess that goes to the ethos, the credibility of the whole situation. And it's not just the content of the words, right? I notice when you do, when you, when you perform this, your voice and your, your body language seems to be calmer, right? It, 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 you don't seem to, to be speaking from a place of emotion. Was that a choice on your well, part? Well, you want to try to, uh, you know, as an actor, how do you prepare? Okay, even as a lawyer. Well, first of all, you, you want to draw the jury in. You want to just reason with them. Let, let's talk about this. You know, it's one thing, this is one thing, and this is, you understand what I'm talking to you about, right? Right? But now, let me, now, then we go to another level. So you get them at ease. You, you say, look, let's just talk about this. We all understand this in the same way. Okay, that's one thing. Okay, now, let me explain something to you. Now, follow me here. And you take it to another level, which would be the, the logical level. Right. Logos. So, so having, it's sort of like you can never uh, get a second chance to make a first impression. And so you begin with a calm, unemotional, credible argument that concedes what you believe is true and what you think they'll believe is true. Right. And then you just did something interesting. You said, but, but now let me talk to you about what right. happened here. Yes. Which is logos, the concept of reason. And let's look at that part of the closing argument. Okay. She sat down as a secretary, sending hints that sex was in the offing. Entrapment. That's defined as when a person is lured into the commission of a crime that he has no predisposition to commit. And that's this case. Clyde Burroughs never would have committed this crime if he had been left alone by the police. That's entrapment. Mr. Tisbury stands here lecturing you on how we need to stop the Johns. Clyde never was a John in his life. He only became a John here because the police convinced him to become one. How does Jimmy use Logos in the closing argument? Well, he explains what, what entrapment is. A person has no predisposition to commit this crime. And then he says, my client would have never committed this crime if this police officer didn't put him up to it. It's pretty simple, you know what I mean? So, as I say in the book, uh, Logos logic includes common sense. Reason, intellect, it's consistent with that, you know what I mean? 
there, there's a validity to what I'm saying. The guy's sitting at a bar. If, if no one would have approached him, if no one would have come up to him and come on to him, he wouldn't have committed a crime. Tell me he committed a crime? That's the way David Kelly lays it out. And I, I think it's a good argument so far, so far. And as we talk about this argument, we've established Jimmy's credibility. We've also seen Jimmy use the reason and logic based on the facts of the case. There's no emotion in it yet, is there? Not much, not much. Was that, that a choice? Yeah, well, yes, it is. Because you, you now you want to you go to the uh, jury and let them say, just follow me here on an intellectual, intellectual level. Follow me here just with how I'm following this in a very intellectual way. We'll follow it this way. And then when you go to the next one, I think pathos, what you want to do is pathos. What you wanna, when you go to pathos, what you want to do is get to them in an emotional way and say, what are we doing here? Put your hearts, listen to this. Come on now. Come on. Let's look at that. And big picture, is this what we want the police to be doing? Staking out law-abiding people? Baiting them into committing crimes? Then busting them? Sure, if Clyde Burroughs had been stronger, he could have resisted. Maybe if he'd been more moral, he would have resisted. But he wasn't. He was weak. And thank God we have the police to go out and find the weak and lure them into committing crimes. Come on. The police are supposed to protect us, not trap us. The police are supposed to be catching the people who are out there committing crimes, not finding innocent people and luring them into committing crimes. Clyde Burroughs would not be sitting here today but for the actions of a police officer. Is this the government we want? Now, it seems as if you go straight for the emotion with the last part of the closing. Right, right. You, you want to sort of evoke uh, outrage in them. That's what uh, Jimmy sort of wanted to do. Wanted to evoke uh, a feeling of... Uh, of contempt, of what were these police persons doing? They're unworthy, you know, and let them, stir them to action, let them see, you know, let them see that uh, this was wrong and, and this wrong should be righted. Now, why do you suppose Kelly put it in that order? Why not start with the pathos? There's some lawyers who, it seems to me, rely heavily on pathos and come right at it. What do you think of that approach? Well, you know what? It depends. It depends what you want to do. I mean, uh, there, there's, there's more than one way to skin a cat, I guess. But uh, you know, the way Jimmy would do it, like I say, he likes to start off slow. He likes to earn the trust of the mm -hmm. jury, uh, and he, and and I, I think it worked because on television, you know, everybody would watch and, and know this character of Jimmy, they always said, oh, you know, I had a good feeling about you, you know, the way you went about it, you know, it was something that I could really, you know, it, it let people in the scene. He's not coming on too strong, but he's just doing it in a logical way, and uh, people can follow along with it and sort of give themselves over to it, instead of pounding them, pounding them with it. I always think that pathos has to be earned, that if you go right at it, you lose credibility. But I also wonder if you, if you felt that each one of the three legs of the triangle were necessary. Could, could, the, could the argument have been as strong without the beginning, the middle, or the end? I, I don't think it would be as effective. I think it could be. I think it could be. I'm sure that uh, there are many ways to approach a closing argument that, uh, that is not done in this fashion. But as far as laying it out and as far as telling it as a story, telling it as a story that has a beginning a middle and an end, it's something that a person follows and it sort of leaves them like, well, in that case, I have nowhere else to go. Not guilty. And this beginning, middle, and end follows creating the notion of credibility, reason, and emotion. Yes. 